The following is a presentation from PokerStars.com. For me, for me, for me, it started small. Me, it started small. It started small. From pool halls in Toronto to poker rooms in Las Vegas, it's given me a life I never could, I have, never could have dreamed. The game has taken me around the world. I've seen it all. From the Windy City to Sin City, this game can make you a legend. This game can make you a champion. It may have started small. It may have started but now. But now, but now, but now, it's the big game. This is the next generation. It doesn't, it get, doesn't get any, any bigger, bigger than this. Than this. this is PokerStars.com Big Game. Welcome once again to the Big Game from Las Vegas. Alongside Joe Stapleton, I'm Chris Rose, where tonight six players, including an internet qualifier, will once again be battling it out for over a half million dollars in our state-of-the-art poker room. He's back. It's the poker brat. He's brought 100K. He's in the sixth seat again. Somebody wake up the sensors. It's Phil Helmuth Jr. Joe Cata, the 09 main event champion, had an early exit in his first big game stint. He's hoping to milk that 100 grand a little longer. Phil Locke is here with 100K. The sling is from a recent ATV accident where he nearly died. As for the haircut, I can only imagine there was some brain damage as well. Thankfully, David Williams is all in one piece, and he hopes his stack of 100 grand doesn't take a serious hit as well. Businessman, entrepreneur, and amateur poker player Bill Perkins has brought his 100,000 with him and a line of pros waiting to play him that stretches to the Sahara. The loose cannon is David Fishman, a college math teacher from Tempe, Arizona. The 35-year-old father of twins overcame bone cancer in his early 20s and remains cancer-free today. Fishman's been staked 100 grand, and right now he's with Amanda Leatherman. David, you are a cancer survivor. How has that changed your outlook on life? Uh, it just makes me want to live every single day to the fullest. I just want to go out there and, and live my life as best I can. You said that this isn't about money for you. This is about fulfilling a dream. Uh, more so than anything else, absolutely. I and mean, the money would be nice. I have two kids I want to support. Um, but since I started playing poker about 10 years ago, I've always just wanted to sit down at a table with one pro. Uh, well, look what you have. Now I got this. It's awesome. All right, good luck today, okay? Thank you very much. Once again, each cannon's been staked 100 large. He keeps all profits above the initial 100,000. And at season's end, the loose cannon who's won the most money earns a North American Poker Tour passport worth 50K. Hey! Good to see you. Good to see you. Good luck to you. Thank you. David is chasing Nadia Magnus for that passport. She leads all loose cannons at $63,600. So that's a number David will be shooting for as well. Action begins on the one-handed Phil Locke. Pocket pair. It's a decent start. 2-4, right? Everybody sit with 100? Everybody sit with more? Yeah, 100 for me. 100 you guys? Raise to 800, raise to 800. Philly boy, 100? 100. Locke with a min raise. Action folds over to the cannon. Queen deuce. Folds. I think he wanted to get in there already. I mean, you know you're at least getting called, right? I figure of 82% call. Like 16% raise. <laughs> I'm only looking to see about raising. Yeah, you're right. Williams calls. That's a pretty loose defend, even with posting innings. The odds aren't quite there. Jack trade, Jack, two clubs. Lock still best. Action on Williams. Fires 1,700. That's a donk bet bluff to try to take this down, but this isn't a very scary board for two sixes. Lock calls. Lock ain't scared. Ace of spades on the turn. Williams checks his gut shot. Looks like David may have shut it down. 42. Lock bets 4,200, and Williams folds. So Phil Locke takes down the first hand of the week. No, no, no. Come on, no. Come, on come on. It's first come on, hand. Show it. It's good for the game. You show me a bluff, I might go crazy. First hand? I can't afford a bluff. I got hospital bills. Not even Tony G is crazy enough to offer that kind of insurance. Time to look at the rules of the big game. Each table lasts exactly 150 hands. The action pre-flop is pot limit, then no limit after the flop. Blinds are two and four hundred with a hundred dollar ante, all of which is paid by the player on the button. And every player begins with at least a hundred grand, but can reload for up to five hundred thousand dollars. You know, Chris, they say money never sleeps, which is why this show comes on after midnight. <laughs> so what exactly happened? Okay, so what happened was, I was uh, um, ATVing with a group of guys in Oregon, and out of nowhere, I was going like 30, 40 miles an hour, and out of nowhere, this on the sand dunes, I just there was air underneath me, like in the cartoons, except instead of hanging and like thinking what to do, I just started thinking <laughs> like gravity would have you. And I, it was a 28 uh, foot, eight inch cliff, and I just, 40 miles an hour or so, just bit it, 
and uh, 1200. A lot of a lot of damage to the body, but I'm healing super fast. Perkins raises. I mean, not good that you got an accent, but good that you're healing fast. I'm just happy you're alive, so you can be in this game with us here today. <laughs> oh, well, there you go, kid. Take the money. Lock calls. Perkins raise. Here we go again. Impressive. Another loose defend here. Nine, four, five, two spades. I checked to the razor. Why are you checking to me? What kind of check is that? 2,400. Perkins bets 2,400 with middle pair. This would be another loose call. Locke makes it. Why is it? Why are you always taking my money? I haven't done anything. I'm just existing. Check. Check. Go. Check. Both check the eight of diamonds. Both also picked up a gut shot there. 32. Lock on a bluff, bets 3,200. This is a decent river card to bluff at. Makes Perkins five even less likely to be good, and it's conceivable a flush draw would play this way. And Perkins folds. I know you hit a flush, you jerk. Well, I'll show you one card. King of spades. Let the other one be a mystery. You're the only one that can still win them all, Phil. I'm the only one left. <laughs> huh. I'd rather you didn't. I have to win at least one hand, OK? Just at least one. He's 2-0. and oh. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you made it here, too, Phil. I always wanted to play with at least one Phil, and now I got two, so I mean, that's just awesome. Every time. Is he talking about moi? Don't worry, you'll get your fill of Phil's this week, one with red and yellow hair. The other will make you pull your hair out. <laughs> Helmuth, looking at six. Queen folds. David Fishman, the loose cannon, jack eight. Looks like he wants to play. He limps. Not crazy about that limp. <laughs> I don't like your outlook right now. Williams calls. Lock. Calls. So the damage that I had, Joe's in. dislocated elbow, shattered wrist. Try geminal nerve damage right here. Uh, 35 stitches around my eye, and actually I'm getting surgery to my, my uh, I check my. Check. Phil checks to Joe, who checks. The, the orbital plate, orbital plate that's holding my eyeball in is kind of like broken, and some of the fat from my eye is sinking down, so they, they have to put a plate in. Call. Do you have insurance? Health uh, insurance? I'm just, I, you know, it's really amazing. I let my insurance dry up. And I've just been paying cash out of pocket, and I'm surprised it's not doesn't hurt. The bills are not like it's not it's not super sick, you know. Meanwhile, the loose cannon David Fishman is semi bluffed the flop, 32, and fires again. I'm like a pretty bad six things happen to me: broken rib and lots of I don't know. I've just been paying out of pocket. It's not that bad. If Locke thought his nine was good enough to call him the flop, 3200, then not much has changed here. He calls again. Captain calling the calling station. <laughs> Hailing all frequencies. Ace of hearts on the river. Lock checks. Let's see if David can fire the third photon torpedo or checks his way into the escape shuttle. Ten. He fires ten grand. I didn't love the pre-flop limp, but this is a very nice three-barrel attempt early on. I don't have a ten. And you're betting ten. That's probably a bad spot for me to be in. Oh, but I love calling, as Perkins knows, you know? If I fold, you're going to show, right? You want me to show? Yeah. First hand I'm in, you want me to show? Make yeah, pay you. if I fold. You got to pay it. Nah. You can't pay it. Actually. I don't know. We'll see. If I show, will you show? I'm folding. I fold. I fold. He folds. Now, if I show, will you show? No. Fishman takes down the pot. <laughs> if that was a bluff, sir, that was a, a well bold bluff because I did not have a 10. Good move, loose cannon. No free health care, no free information. <laughs> that was a well bold bluff, whatever that is. Nice start for David Fishman. The big game is just getting going. Much more from Las Vegas coming your way after this. Welcome back to Las Vegas, where college math teacher David Fishman is our loose cannon this week. Fishman won a tournament online in order to qualify for his seat, and that's only the second best thing to ever happen to him on a computer. Hey, I'm Dave Fishman. I am a math teacher from Arizona. I got the skills to play here, and I'm ready to take down the big game. So I teach math at Arizona State University. 
Go Sun Devils. Being a teacher in, to, in today's society is not the easiest thing. Uh, don't get paid an excessive amount. Uh, lately, there's actually in my home state of Arizona, there's been a lot of budget cuts. I actually got furloughed last year, took a big hit to my paycheck. So uh, this opportunity to supplement my income and then some is uh, definitely an opportunity that can't be passed up. I got to go sit with those guys and do everything I can uh, to grind my way to a big payday. I've been married for eight years, this coming October, to my beautiful wife, Stephanie. So uh, I met my wife online through an online dating service, and actually you have to pay a subscription uh, to, in order to be able to even write to people on there, and I decided I never wanted to do that until I read my wife's profile. I paid the $20, and I wrote to her and said, I just spent 20 bucks to write to you and nobody else, so you better be worth it. And best 20 bucks I ever spent. And now we have two beautiful kids, twins, boy and a girl, and I am here to play for them. David's a cancer survivor. He actually met a woman online. This guy runs pretty good. Dave, did, did you move to Vegas after your World Series finish? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I was in college in Dallas before that at SMU. Oh, so the Methodist? And then I left there. Too many opportunities opened up. I had to be here all the time, and I couldn't focus on school, and it was just easier. And... <laughs> it's not a bad opportunity, though, that they have. Yeah, man, I can't complain. Although, I want to finish school. Yeah. Well, where were you? How far were along were you? I was a senior, econ. Oh, well, that close? Guess what, kids? You're not David Williams. Stay in school. Helmuth raises to 2,000 with a pocket pair. Fishman folds. Gamble! Gamble, gamble! The president spares a turkey every year, but I'm not sure what the policy is on donkeys. <laughs> yeah, a few of my teachers after that, because I was still enrolled, you know, and I, after that second place, <laughs> emailed me, well, hey, we heard what happened, congrats. I don't think we'll be seeing you back here. <laughs> Three to the flop. Trey Jack, five. Oh, man. Lock checks. I was actually thinking I was. I'm like, yeah, you will. I'll be back next semester. Help me bets 5,000. Make it 15,000. Perkins raises with a flush draw. Help me's got the best hand. This is a tough board to value raise on, so Phil yeah. may read it for the semi bluff that it is. Quick and easy. Quick and easy's been called. Quick and easy's been called. Quick and easy. Lock folds. Now, whether Phil's making the right read here or not, these guys do not like folding on the flop, especially when they've already put a 5K chip in there. And we've got Police Academy's Michael Winslow in the two seat. <laughs> Helmuth calls. I check. Why? Why not? Why would you do that? <laughs> it's not right. Phil's checked in the dark. Not right. Six of spades on the turn. 20,000. Perkins bets 20 grand. Perkins and his choo-choo have picked up more outs, which is always a good time to keep firing. And by betting, you do build your own implied odds if you hit your hand. <laughs> Phil calls. Oh, no. <laughs> I think I might be in trouble. The river. Deuce of diamonds giving Perkins bottom pair. Helmuth checks. Phil's checks, so this would be a decent card to fire again on the four-card straight board. But there's also a chance Perkins may think his deuce is good enough of the time to just check behind. So, Phil, I got a question for you. Do you think that technology is the cause of human people, humankind's problems, or do you feel that technology will be the salvation and the cure to people's problems? <laughs> Some folks will sometimes ask a question like this to gauge someone's comfort level. No, no answer on that question whatsoever. No, no thoughts. And some folks just want to put Phil on monkey tilt. I guess he's a robot. I'm not getting involved in this one. <laughs> just looking at you just to look away from him. <laughs> I check. What you got? You got a jack you got me. No. Helmuth shows the tens. Nice hand. Nice hand. Wow. That'd be sweet if you turned over a four. After saying that, you oh, that would have been that would have like, been no. a salty. <laughs> Phil Helmuth holding on with the under pair. Phil wins a pot of almost seventy-seven grand. I should have said something. He would have bluffed again. So Helmuth picks up the win, but Joe, I want to focus on the loose cannon. I know we're only eight hands in, but David Fishman doesn't look like the type of LC who's going to just wait around for premium hands. I get that sense as well, Chris, especially after watching him execute that three-barrel semi-bluff a few hands ago. David Fishman's best bet against this lineup may be to temper that urge for aggression and carefully pick his spots rather than be the table maniac. As an amateur, he'll get away with that for a while, but eventually someone's bound to get curious, and they'll want to see if David Fishman lives up to his name. 
All right, now it's time for Couch Cannon. This is where we reveal only the Loose Cannon's cards, and you at home try to play the hand from their perspective. I like this, but I do get a little nervous playing for this kind of money. I'm very lucky. Right now, I'm very lucky. I'm reading people. It's a very lucky thing. No one thinks it's lucky. That's called a little facetious thread there. Lucky, lucky, lucky. All right, action begins on Phil Helmuth. He raises to 2,000. See what we got. King, queen. We can definitely call and try to see a flop here. That's what we do. Perkins folds. David Williams calls. Locks in. Cat is out. Joe Cat, a world champ, ladies and gentlemen. World champion. Getting it up. <laughs> Folding like the best of them. Flop. Ah, oh, we got top pair. Obviously, we don't like the multi-way action, but this board is drier than Las Vegas itself. Action is checked on over to the cannon. Five. You like the bet? I do. Even if we get raised, we're probably going to stick around. Williams folds. With locks range against us, I'm not too afraid of what he has here. I'll give you a second chance to answer that question, though. He usually doesn't talk when he's in pants. <laughs> he's all business all the time. Phil, I'll always razz him in every hand. Oh, I love it. Until he stops calling me. David's politely trying to tell Perkins to zip it. Lock raises to 15,000. I'm in the middle of a pot. It's kind of not very appropriate to be talking to me right now, but <laughs> I guess you're an amateur, so it's all right. I am an amateur. The pro folds. You're a professional. I know you're very proud of that. OK, so obviously we don't like the raise. It's possible that we're beat, but with top pair, we pretty much just want to get to a cheap showdown. Yep, there's the call. We've got Locke's attention now. Deuce of clubs on the turn. Check. Locke checks. I don't think Phil is raising us with a deuce, so I'm OK with that turn card. If we are ahead, he didn't catch up. All right, we check. Six of diamonds on the river. I like our check on the turn because we got raised on the flop. Now, it's hard to think this six really made Phil's hand. Since we did check on the turn, even if Phil bets here, we should be prepared to look him up. Phil's got chips. Nervous? We'll see how big the bet is. I check. He checks. Shows the cannon check. and shows. Let's see what Locke's got. Oh, he was bluffing. Wow, he raised us on the flop with air. <laughs> you can't push us around. And the cannon picks up a pot of nearly 40 grand. You might have got called. Should have pulled the trigger, <laughs> Phil. I think you got to called. <laughs> I think you would have got snap called. Call. <laughs> well, now you can add bruised ego to Locke's list of ailments. Meanwhile, the loose cannon stack is getting healthier. See if it stays that way when we come back on the big game after this. Welcome back to the big game in Las Vegas, where Phil Helmuth is still a bit perturbed about the timing of Bill Perkins' curiosity. You can ask me. You can ask me any question you want, but if I'm in the middle of a hand, I'd, I'd appreciate it. You know. You got it. From now on, you got it. 100. Nice hand. When we're in the middle of a pot, you can talk to me all you want. When it's just you and I, that's cool. Yeah. All right. All right. I didn't mind that. No, no, no. I'm talking about the last hand where I was. He bet 5,000. I was still studying him. Ace 10 for Fishman. All right, my oh, wife. My, my wife hates this hand. So. Why? She does. I don't know. She does. Make mama happy. Perkins raises. Williams calls. Oh, here they come. Locks in. Cat is out. So's Phil. Chance to play with you. I don't want you. Playing with me. I'm scared of you. Chance to play with. Don't you know I'm scared? Three to the flop. Four, seven, eight. Bottom pair for Williams. Ham for a stack. I'm going to check. Perkins checks. Williams checks. Check. So's Phil. Locke checks his gut shot. Nine of spades on the turn. Williams still best. Bad turn card for DW's hand. How many calls do you think I'll get? At least uh, at most two. Math teacher. I say two. Perkins bets 4,400. This nine is another over card to Williams' hand. Some straights hit. A ton of potential draws just picked up. Even Perkins has got a gut shot at this point. But Williams raises to 12-5, and that gets locked to fold. This is a stone bluff, and based on board texture, this is a bluff that can really only bluff out another bluff. 
Perkins has a terrible pair and gut shot draw, and even he's got equity, so no legit hand would fold here. And David Williams' bluff works, even though it was the best hand, as he's showing Bill Perkins. Unintentionally, I think. And with that win, David Williams has visited Profitville. In the meantime, Bill Perkins has bluffed off nearly half his chips. He's stuck almost 50 grand. This 41-year-old father of three hails from Houston and earned his money in finance as a commodities trader. Perkins is a film producer in his spare time and also contributes to various charities and research projects. His more recent film credits include Unthinkable with Samuel L. and Afterlife starring Liam Neeson. Did you say unthinkable or unwatchable? <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> you are cruel. Action begins on the cannon. You have one coming? First one to do it in February. That's awesome. That is awesome. That you know what it is yet? Find out probably next week or the week after. Perkins limps. Pocket pair for David. Uh, twins, I guess. <laughs> he calls. Just expecting one, as far as I know. Oh well, there's another pair. Lock limps as well. Cat is in. And Helmuth checks. Surprised not to see Locke raise. You usually don't want to see five-way action with Jax. 7-10-4, set for Williams. Kata checks, Helmuth checks. Perkins pointedly checks. Terrible flop for Locke. Williams bets 1,600. Locke calls. Locke's playing cautiously, even though there isn't an overcard out there to warn him. Speculation's over. Now we're down to two on the turn which is the queen of diamonds. Williams probably likes this card. Check, 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 check. Goes check, check. Six of hearts on the river. Think David was looking for a check raise on the turn, but this six and heart both complete a ton of draws. Goes check. 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 And Williams wins. Set of tens. Giving you a little rope on the turn, then that Thank river you. card came, and I'm Thank like, ugh. Lock avoids serious trouble. I could have lost more, I think. I played that hand a little careful. I was trying to let you bet the turn. I could feel the rope being let out. I was like, what is this rope for? <laughs> D-Dub was hoping to play some hangman there. David Williams trying to hang his, his little crippled friend, you know? I like that. I like that. Welcome back to Las Vegas, Nevada, home of the big game. Remember, there are more stats for this table, as well as bonus hands and footage deemed too hot for TV on the website. Yeah, after my 115-hour uh, poker session that I played, I that's noticed, insane. That was insane. I noticed something even more insane, that I felt like I had gone, you know, like every six months or whatever, out of Did you time, win in that session? $6,766. At one point, I was up 14920 At one point, I was down. Uh, 17,400. I, I, I couldn't, if I played 115 hours, I couldn't, I couldn't win. You, the human spirit can decide to do strange things and you just rise. Well, to, look, you, I can play 50, 60 hours and win, but 115 hours, I just. It was ridiculous. Joe Cat has barely played in the half hour we've been on the air. <laughs> At the time, it was the longest recorded poker session outside of someone's mom's basement. <laughs> Cat raises to 1,200. Helmuth looking at ace, king. We could see a re-raise, but he is in early position. Phil just calls. David Fishman, the loose cannon, ace tray. There's been a raise and a call in front of him. This wouldn't be the best call with ace rag. But he does call. I bet the pot. Perkins re-raises to 7,200. This is a fairly risky move with a hand that doesn't flop very well, even in position. Williams folds. That's very disappointing. David, share my disappointment. <laughs> you know? Lock folds a pair. I hurt. Cata folds. I raised some pops. Helmuth re-pops to 25-2. I don't even think there's a, a decision to be made. Fishman folds. Helmuth's repping a pretty big hand here. Here, let's put it all in. What do you got, 40? Let's gamble, man. It's like a tournament. This is Phil's way of saying he's committed to calling a shove. We at least know I don't have a pair of nines. And by being the last aggressor, Phil puts the decision on Perkins, who now realizes he's at best up against two overcards and is likely to be playing for his entire stack after the flop. Come on, man. You can't fold. You're the businessman. 
<laughs> what the F was that? No idea what that means, but that sounded so good. Should I get my arm in the hand, please? <laughs> don't taunt me. I don't know. Could that be the double reverse psychology, whatever? <laughs> okay, I'll ask you the question. <laughs> Do you think that Technology. Yes, the answer is yes. No, no, do you think that technology is the cause of man's problems or will be the solution to man's problems? Well, it's, technology certainly allows uh, 8 billion people to live a lot more comfortably. It would have been impossible in the past. That's my answer. That's your answer. Technology okay. also allows Phil to chill Cristal in his private jet in his sub-zebra fridge while he tweets about playing Chinese poker with Charles Barkley. <laughs> Perkins folds. Show us one card. If I showed you one, you wouldn't be surprised, I don't think. <clears throat> I believe that's true. <clears throat> I got a full based on that answer. I smooth called an upfront raise and then just repopped everything. I mean, ah, forget all that. You're too happy. <laughs> <laughs> forget all that crap. I gotta be strong. So with that hand, Phil Helmuth, yes, that Phil Helmuth has a profit of over 51K on the big game. While the businessman, Bill Perkins, is in the hole almost 55 grand. The loose cannon isn't doing too badly either. Fishman is already up 32,000. And remember, if he maintains any profit after 150 hands, he'll have the option to either keep the cash or come back one more time and try to increase his stack. And after just 20 hands, David only trails the leading loose cannon, Nadia Magnus, by a little more than 31,000. Assuming you're not in a relationship and uh, you, you know, you're not leaving any loved ones behind, but if you could push a button, and you could shoot yourself into the future at any number of years you want. And you just, and if there's, you know, if there's a way to survive, there's oxygen and food, you get that. But if it's a wasteland because we've blown ourselves to bits, you get that too. How far, if you, would you push yourself into the future and how far? Like I would, I would in a snapshot, <laughs> 40,000 years, let's bring me there. Let's see what's going on. I hope there's food, <laughs> you know? Now, wait a minute. If 40,000 years, the planet were like a I'm fireball ask, and you died instantly, I'm you'd have to live with that result, yeah. right? Yeah, I live with whatever result. No, I, I live there for, it, assuming once, if Jennifer wasn't in my life. Oh, you live there forever, you just. Yeah, if I wasn't, if I didn't have a significant relationship happening or whatever, I would, like a super astronaut question, would you jettison into the future and just gamble? I would choose right now. I would go for it. Because, because I know that, because, I, because I'm you in a pretty good now. position it's right now. It's very good right now, it's super solid right now. <laughs> right. right. You get there and you haven't evolved the right way and humans are now like, right. don't and breathe, I, they have some I, other source because there's no air and you just... 40,000 yeah. you know? 40, years, what if the average height's like 10 feet and like... <laughs> you, <laughs> Bill Perkins is adding on 50K. And everybody's super smart, you know, and yeah, all of a sudden you show up. <laughs> Broke. <laughs> Broke, none of the women are interested in you. <laughs> Welcome to Planet Lock. You know, Chris, I can't tell you how many times this question comes up at a poker table. <laughs> Actually, yes, I can once. Cannon folds over to Perkins. Aces. I like that. I feel relieved with this now. It's like, whew. he's taking all my money down there, picking on me. Yeah, Phil, stop picking on Bill. He raises to 2,000. Maybe Perkins' rep will get him some action. Not yet. And Phil folds. That's a waste. But give him those cards back. And shows. Now I wish I had called. I had the four eight of spades. Perfect timing for somebody to try and pick on me. Perkins did raise it up pretty big, but then again, aces aren't the kind of hand you want to limp and get called with in three spots. A raise the 12 or 1600 may have gotten him some action though. Bill Perkins, UTG this hand. Five deuce. Two aces, huh, Bill? Nice. Just in case the first one wasn't working, I needed another one. It worked a little too effectively. He limps. For the home audience. <laughs> Thank you. Williams is in, so's Locke. Family clock on. Not Kata. Helmut's in. No one's raising because they know you're calling, Bill. They're just like, well, let me just look a little cheaper, you know? Fishman makes it five to the flop. More multi way action. Only Kata's sitting this one out. Who's the real loose cannon here? <laughs> <laughs> the flop. Jack, eight tray, two hearts. Helmut checks middle pair. Fishman checks bottom pair. Got anything yet? I haven't looked at my I haven't looked at my cards yet. All right. David definitely has looked at his cards. He may have forgotten, but we know he looked. Checks his gut shot. Check. And Locke checks two. Six of clubs on the turn. Twenty-seven hundred. 
Helmuth bets 2,700 with the best hand. Fishman folds. Fold. So's Perkins. Williams is out. Locke calls with a flush draw. Got a deuce in the deck. Can we ask, actually ask for a deuce? How about a ten of spades? Helmuth checks. Check. Lock checks. Eight. It's good. <laughs> I actually needed a deuce. And Phil wins. Helmuth, that is. Helmuth scoops up more cash and has now turned a profit of more than 56K. I bet the poker brat is feeling pretty good right about now. Pretty, pretty. We're coming back right after this. Welcome back to Las Vegas, where having Phil Locke play this week is something of a minor miracle. The Unabomber's new look was not completely by choice, but rather the result of a serious ATV accident he survived just a few days ago. 13 days ago, myself and seven friends were in Oregon. We rented ATVs. I mean, everything was going along well, even though I was a little bit behind the pack, and we were flying. Then they like got out of sight for one second. I could have sworn they went straight, but they veered to the right. I didn't catch it. I kept going, and all of a sudden, there was no earth beneath me, and I just started sinking right away. I had powered myself over a, like, I don't know, 20 foot something. I didn't know that the something was there. <laughs> this is what he jumped over. This is my fifth broken arm. Wait, you were broken two bones at the same time? One time. I it's possible I broke my radius and at the same time, because I can't really twist at all. Why are you in the hospital? Because I'm not stronger than the earth. The earth beat me in a, in a race where I smashed into it. My durableness showed through in that I can take like 20 foot, 30 foot cruising through the air and smash into the earth and still live. Proving once again that humans are tenacious. The real quick summary of my damages, one broken rib, a shattered wrist, slight metatarsal damage, one dislocated elbow, orbital plates that hold the eyeball in place. It got smashed. Uh, and then the worst thing is I have a, the trigeminal nerve. It was smashed pretty bad, and I can't feel anything. My whole body works except for my arm, which will fix, and that's it. Every time I feel the pain and the numbness right here, I go, wow, I have 20-20 vision. I can walk around. I am not brain soup. I know who I am. I feel great. And I uh, just, I don't know, I go into manic happy mode once I realize how lucky I am. I don't mean to be insulting, but Phil Locke kind of already was brain soup. So if anything, he's more coherent and intelligible than ever. His chip stack a little under the weather as well, as you can see. Action will begin this hand on David Williams. It's funny, it's mostly from my elbow. The cast can't feel the difference, but my elbow, which was dislocated, likes the softness. Dude, so you're going 40 miles an hour, all of a sudden the gravity falls. What happened then? The ground just fell out, and I was like, oh my god, if I stand I mean, but you're up there, now you're tumbling. I mean, what's going on? Did the machine just turn straight down? or? No, it was going like this, and I said, oh. So the machine's going level at 40 miles an hour, and you're And I thought, if I stay on this ATV, I'm going to chest impact, crush my body. It's going to be a mess. So I tried to get away from it, and I was going to try and roll and hit the ground away from the ATV, but I didn't get far away enough. And when we hit the ATV from my pushing away, had angled this way, and then we jambled up again, in the, and it pressed up against my elbow and I smashed my arm. And The guys that saw it said they couldn't believe my legs went uninjured. They thought my legs were going to be smashed. <clears throat> raised by Williams, re-raised by Cata. So you landed, and the machine just landed. It landed like this, with the wheels like this, and it went back over me. So it like. I tried getting away by pushing against it, and, it, and I got a halfway away the next. I was only halfway off the ATV when the next thing I knew, I was sitting in the sand, going like this, going, oh my god, I'm bleeding, I can see, I can't move my arm, like just kind of getting a feeling for the damage, you know? I wanted to play. Take my ball and back, go home. Perkins folds. Williams is now out of position at Cata with a raggy ace. And Williams is out too. Show it. Show. Won't show. He'll take the cash, though, with the re-raise. 
Well, back to Phil Locke. He's obviously been through a lot, so you got to give him credit for playing hurt this week, Joe. This is the second table where Phil sat from the outset, and after 24 hands on each, here are his pre- and post-accident numbers. His VPIP and pre-flop raising percentages are down slightly, but the big difference is his profit loss, where the Unabomber is down over 28,000 already. Well, to me, the biggest difference is obviously the makeover. Got to tell you, I think the Flock of Seagulls look is growing on me. Yeah, when he woke up in the green room this time, he had a new haircut. <laughs> Action will start on Phil. King Jack. You're in Oregon, not like a foreign country. Yeah, Oregon, thank God. And when I went to the hospital, which was, they got me there pretty quick, I was really happy there was a good stitch guy there and a, a good arm guy, and they started working on me right away. Helmuth raised. How long are you going to be in the sling for? This is six weeks for the cast, and uh, I'm already doing PT for my elbow. I can get, I get 60% use of, like, I can move down to this to about there before the pinch, whatever. I almost had to wear a sling on the front table. I just located my okay. shoulder right before. No way. Yeah. That's harsh. That championship bracelet wouldn't have looked as cool draped over a sling. Nine do seven. Perkins checks. Williams checks top pair. Williams may like his hand, but he's checking to the razor. Phil's missed pretty hard. He's trying to decide if these two will fold to a C bet. Yep, he checks. Four clubs on the turn gives Perkins a piece. Check. 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 Perkins checks. <laughs> Williams still best. Fires 4,600. What's the total? Phil can't really be thinking about making a play here. You are correct. Checks around the flop. Perkins may like his four. Do you think people will be better off 10 years in the future from now or worse off? Better off. Pretty confident answer. Wouldn't that make me an optimist? <laughs> Sort of, but it's the whole sentence, the whole, whole thing. How I say it. What how I say you it. say it. <laughs> it's just how you say it. I, you know. Perkins calls. <laughs> Probably making a big bad mistake right here. The river, the four of hearts. On live TV, but I don't know. That gives him trip fours. I'm going to check. He checks. He's risking some value with that check, considering Williams could easily check behind. Nope, Williams bets 11-4. The bad call on the turn and the bad check on the river have both worked out. Min raise. Perkins raises to 22-8. Min raise is about his only shot of getting called, though I'm not sure I'd want to draw that much attention to a min raise. Williams hasn't seen Perkins play much, so he may not be sure what a min raise means coming from the businessman. Williams calls. Perkins shows and takes down his biggest pot of the night. Sorry. For what? I asked you a question. <laughs> and, it, and that wasn't the way it was supposed to, you know. I thought you Phil didn't have Perkins anything. with the min raise in the river, the little sneaky four in the river. So you weren't winning on the turn? I, I didn't think I was. <laughs> you might, what if you were winning on the turn? I, I might have been winning. Was I winning on the turn? No, we all know you were not winning on the turn. And you, deep down inside, you know you weren't either. <laughs> <laughs> but you love peeling cards to hurt people, so you did it, and you got it. I'm not sure about 10 years from now, but Perkins is definitely doing better than he was a few minutes ago. We're back after this. Welcome back to the big game. We're at hand 30 of the 150 we'll play this week. So where do you live? Northern California. Oh, that's Phil. How do you know which Phil you're talking to? You got two Phil's, two Dave's. It's going to be confusing here. I'm going to go with 16-year-old Phil. Southern uh, California. Uh, yes, I, I blend. Still Connecticut? I would say about 75% LA, 25% Vegas. And then, you know, I about a, then I just drift around following poker a lot, too. City to city, planet to planet. <laughs> Action on Williams. Folds. Pocket pair for Locke. He raises to 1,200. Joe Cata, King but Jack, not the, uh, calls, Helmuth's out. 
9-7 for the Cannon, who folds. And Perkins calls. Cat and Locke are just about even to win the hand. Perkins in with the worst of it again. Seven ace king. Perkins checks. Locke checks. Cata checks. Middle pair. Seven of hearts on the turn. Perkins would be lucky to be playing the board by the river, but it looks like he's going to bet it. He does, firing 2,300. Locke folds. If Cat has been watching the way Perkins plays, he probably shouldn't fold this. He doesn't. He calls. Especially since Perkins limped pre-flop and then checked the flop. Ten of hearts on the river. Perkins is playing the board now. Let's see if he bluffs at it again. Nope, it's the old check head scratch trick, Chief. <laughs> Very famous overseas, I hear. How you doing down there? Way on you. He's got a technology yeah, question for you. <laughs> no, no questions, though. no, no questions. <laughs> All right, I check. Perkins checks. I got Fugats. What's that? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> it's a Fugazi. It means it's fake. I think I was moving you. Or I'm just scared of you. That watch was shining in my eye. And scared me. Joe Cata wins just his fourth pot of the night and now has turned a profit of 2300 Cata's profit has come despite not making one aggressive post-flop action through 30 hands. He's been content to just call and hope his hand holds up. Not a ton to prove when you're the world champ. On the other end of the spectrum, with a lot to prove, is Bill Perkins, whose aggro factor is 9.0. Apparently, his game plan is to be super aggressive, ask a lot of weird questions, and see where his deep pockets take him. Well, that road has been a little rocky for the commodities traders. So far, Perkins is down about 22K. That's a lot better than being left with Fugats. <laughs> Lock folds. Suited connectors for Kata. 1,200. Raises to 1,200. Helmuth folds. David Fishman, big slick. Big slick in position. Make a pot. Fishman re-raises to 4,800. It's a good re-raise in position so you can get the pot heads up. Perkins folds. Williams, ace, nine. He folds. Now back to the original razor. Kata knows the loose cannon isn't likely to be messing around with anything that isn't beating 6-5. And your implied odds with 6-5 aren't great either. And the world champ folds. So Fishman wins without even seeing a flop. I had a hand, too. If by hand you mean that you had two cards, then yes, Phil, you did. Poker's fine. Well, David Fishman <laughs> continues his hot start with another pot that puts him up over 30 grand. While the two Phils are going in opposite directions, Helm is up 54,000, Locke is down 34K. The loose cannon has played solid and has really shown me something so far. It'll be interesting to see if Fishman can continue to hang with these pros, or will they begin to figure out his game as we move along? All right, guys, that's the end of the night. David, you're up. How are you feeling? I'm up. Sweet. I'm feeling great. <laughs> <laughs> didn't even know. Bill, who's the loose cannon? You or him? I, I think I am the <laughs> right now, but I'm about, I'm going to think I'll switch gears a little bit. We're both stuck. Cool. I like your hair. Thanks. Yeah, it was this morning. Yeah. All right, guys, that's the end of the night. I'm Amanda Leatherman saying goodbye for now. And remember, if you've got the cash and the guts, there's always a seat open at the big game. Good night, everybody. For Joe Stapleton, I'm Chris Rose. We'll see you tomorrow night. C6 has been good to you today. Yeah, but I, mean, I started out 70, 80 winner last time too, right? No complaining today. How's the arm? I am like a gazelle. I'm strong, I'm healing fast. Are you on pain meds? A physician told me you can heal a, a, between one and 5% faster if you just cut yourself off from all the meds. So I just stopped everything. The preceding was a presentation from PokerStars.com.